The Zelda series is constantly reimagining the Kingdom of Hyrule. A broken ruin, a vast ocean, scattered islands in the sky, and islands in the sky again. Yup, according to series producer Eiji Aonuma, the scope of Breath of the Wild's upcoming sequel has been expanded to include the skies above Hyrule, an area which the newest teaser trailer focuses heavily on. Strange floating islands rest on the clouds, decorated with golden trees and ancient stonework. Despite getting our second look at Breath of the Wild's sequel, the teaser gives us far more questions than it does answers. We still don't know why Ganondorf's emaciated body was found deep below Hyrule. We don't know exactly what the strange green energy that latches onto Link's right arm is, and now there's the mystery of the Sky Islands. From trailer shots on Hyrule's surface, we can see that the islands don't appear to be visible from below, at least not at this point in time or from these angles. But strange angular stones visible during the stone talus shots match up closely with the stonework of these floating islands, perhaps debris fallen from the skies, which would suggest that the islands are up there, just too high up to be seen or obscured in some other way. Hyrule's surface can be seen from the islands too, here we can even see the windmills in Tanagar Canyon, evidence that this area exists above the kingdom in the present day. We really don't know enough yet to definitively answer what exactly these islands are or where they came from, but we can piece together a few theories. So today I'm joined by Masked and Nintendo Bandit to cover a few ideas, mini theories, on what the Sky Islands could be. These ideas aren't mutually exclusive, they could all be correct in some way, or they could all be completely wrong. There's no way to know until we see some more of the game, whether that's later on this year or sometime in the next. So without further ado, let's explore some theories on the lands above Hyrule. The sequel's Sky Islands are covered not only in bright golden trees, but stone buildings. Many simple archways and roofed shrines, even a gigantic stone tower. Zeltic mentioned in his initial analysis the similarity between the island's archways and Japanese tori, which are gates found at Shinto shrines, which symbolize the transition from the mundane to the sacred. While we can see many more complicated structures, these simple gates are the most abundant, and the similarities to tori are almost definitely intentional. Shinto shrines are built to house kami, along with enshrining sacred artifacts, which could very well be the purpose of these islands, a place that's entirely isolated from the rest of the world, covered in what look like temples. But there's the possibility that these islands might not just be a sacred place, but the sacred realm itself. Throughout the series, what the sacred realm actually is and what it looks like is rarely explored. It's left deliberately vague. It first appeared in A Link to the Past, where, by the time of the game, it had been corrupted by Ganon into a twisted reflection of Hyrule. However, artwork of the sacred realm before this distortion shows a world of floating, rocky islands, sparsely covered in what looks like temples, a place known as the Golden Land. This depiction of the Sacred Realm is seen again during A Link Between Worlds, where both Hyrule and Lowrule's Sacred Realms are shown to be a sky filled with floating islands, with stone platforms and columns. This is obviously somewhat similar to what we see in Breath of the Wild's sequel, groups of small floating islands covered in strange stone gates and shrines. Adding to this are the abundance of trees, each with bright gold leaves, and amber grass and foliage clinging to the rocks. It's unlikely that these shots are just during autumn, either. We can see green trees in Hyrule down below. These golden islands among the clouds would absolutely fit with the title of Golden Land, once the divine resting place of the Triforce. However, there's a pretty big issue with this theory. The Sacred Realm doesn't exist in Hyrule. As far as we know, it's essentially a separate dimension only accessible through a small number of ways, most famously by pulling the Master Sword. A Link to the Past's Dark World has been transformed into an evil version of Hyrule, a mirror dimension. It's not just somewhere above it. This apparent plot hole could of course instead be a plot point in the sequel. Somehow, something could bring the two realms together, and pull the Sacred Realm into Hyrule's skies. 
The absence of the Triforce in Breath of the Wild is one of the game's many mysteries, with the most plausible theory being that Zelda's sealing power is the harnessed power of this sacred artifact. Now, however, in the sequel's trailer, we see Link using an ability with the same golden glow, shining out from the back of his right hand. Historically, a Triforce piece presents itself on the back of the bearer's hand, making the return of the golden power a distinct possibility. And if this is the case, might we be exploring its resting place? Another possibility for what these sky islands are is a little closer to home, that they were built by surface dwellers, a people so advanced that they were able to move the earth into the heavens. Much of the floating islands don't appear to be natural, or as natural as floating chunks of rock could be. Many of them appear to be carved into angular blocky shapes, even square platforms, and roads can be seen across some of the larger islands. Regardless of their purpose, these islands were built by a considerably powerful people. And when talking about these islands, we can't overlook this strange golem-like construct. The two seem to be connected in some way, as the pinecone-like shapes on the golem's shoulders match identical designs atop pillars in the background, which also appear in this shot too. In fact, we can see more pillars on the large islands in this shot, though it's hard to tell presently if they share the same design. The golem appears to be made out of a smooth stone, with what appears to be a nose, and either two small eyes on either side like a frog, or a central, cyclopean eye above. Hanging from below its shoulders are symbols which look somewhat similar to the Sheikah eye, but it isn't a perfect match. The construct is a teal green colour, which matches the green markings found on the stonework. It features a strange symbol on its lower body, a yellow symbol resembling a broomstick, encircled by a glowing green-blue ring. Obviously, this colour matches the strange energy seen latching onto Link's arm, and more interestingly, we can see a beam of this same energy running through the core of the golem, connecting it to whatever strange events happened below Hyrule, and what has happened to Link's arm. The same green energy is seen later on in the trailer, as Link leaps upwards and phases through solid stone to appear on the surface of one of the islands. So, whatever it is, it's definitely a sort of powerful magic, one closely connected to whomever built these islands. In fact, as an extra detail, looking closely at some of the islands, we can see huge green blocks on the underside. Perhaps these are somehow harnessing the same magic that allows Link to propel himself upwards to keep the islands suspended in the air. Of course, the most popular candidate for the architects of these Skylands is the enigmatic Zonai tribe, a race of powerful magic users who vanished suddenly thousands of years before Breath of the Wild, leaving behind only eerie stone ruins. We saw Zonai ruins in the cave network below Hyrule, loosely connecting them to Ganondorf's body in the spectral green hand. These Zonai ruins weren't just a background detail either. The trailer cuts to a strange, dark entrance decorated with Zonai symbols towards the end. The recent trailer helps connect the Zonai with this strange green energy too. While in combat with an enemy hanging from a cave ceiling, Link uses a shield-mounted flamethrower, designed like a dragon's head, almost identical to the dragons found in Zonai ruins in Breath of the Wild. As he backflips, we can see that this flamethrower appears to be powered by this green energy, which means that there's a solid connection between the tribe and these Sky Islands, even if the stonework found there doesn't feature any of their signature symbols. So it's entirely possible that the Zonai, or another similarly powerful race of people, were responsible for the creation of a settlement in the skies. This wouldn't be the first time that this has happened in the series either. There's also the Minish Cap's Wind Tribe. The Wind Tribe are the keepers of the Wind Element, a powerful, mysterious people who resided in the Fortress of Winds, south of Castor Wilds. On his quest to gather the Four Elements, Link travels to the Wind Ruins in search of this strange group, but finds only empty halls crawling with enemies, and a powerful automaton known as Mazal, designed by the Wind Tribe to protect their fortress. 
After defeating the machine, Link reaches an open courtyard littered with broken stone columns and archways. A single tablet reveals the truth about the Wind Tribe. They mastered their control of the winds and decided to join them, leaving their ancient homes for the skies above. And this isn't a figure of speech, the Wind Tribe literally moved to the skies, building a great house on the cloud tops and storing their element in the labyrinthian floating palace of winds. According to Sirok, the tribe used their magic to move their palace into the skies, and a figurine supports this, mentioning that they live above the clouds, suspended by their magical ability to control the winds. Interestingly, a member of the Wind Tribe, Haley, mentions that she's never seen a surface dweller walk on the clouds, implying that this is only possible if you're pure of heart. This isn't the only time that Link is implied to be able to do something magical because he's pure of heart. In Breath of the Wild, the dragons appear invisible to most people. Shay at the Lakeside Stable mentions that many people have reported seeing a large shadow pass over Lake Floria, and in the rumor mill, Tracy reports that she's heard eyewitness accounts of dragon sightings, but only ever from children, mentioning that they're pure of heart. The Koroks, too, appear to be invisible to most people, but like with the dragons, Link is able to see them, perhaps again because he's pure of heart, like a child. But Link isn't the only one. Aside from children, we know that others must be able, or have been able at some point, to see the dragons. In particular, you guessed it, the Zonai, who feature dragons incredibly often in their stonework. Creating a champion suggests that this people worshipped a water dragon, based on the sheer number of depictions of one among their ruins. This connection between the Zonai and the dragons could mean that the ancient civilization were, in some way, pure of heart, and therefore able to walk on clouds or use magic to harness the wind in the same way that the Wind Tribe do, perhaps explaining how they could have been able to raise islands into the sky. Of course, the Zonai are just one possible answer for who built these islands. While there is a solid amount of evidence that we'll see the mysteries of this tribe explored further in the sequel, like the Zonai Dragonhead Flamethrower, or the entrance to an ancient Zonai temple in the first trailer, the truth is that we just don't know enough yet to connect them solidly to the islands in the sky. But this isn't the only mystery to solve. There's also the disappearance of the Master Sword, which is only seen for a single shot in the most recent trailer, apparently swarmed with malice. And of course there's the rising of Hyrule Castle, which is thrusted skyward by an eruption of malice. But why? Let's have a look at some possible answers for these mysteries over on my channel. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. A huge thanks to Mask Nintendo Bandit for joining me on this one. Be sure to check out the video over on his channel. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.